co-founder of Badu Networks and Tustin's Man of the Year. Tony, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you. Um, so today I kind of want to share his story. I've heard it firsthand at Friends Cafe. So Tony, let's begin. Sure, good. Ask okay. away. Yes. Um, well, you need to live in here in Orange County now. Um, can you tell us where you were originally from? Uh, originally, well, I was born in China. <laughs> Came around, my parents dragged me out here when I was five. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I consider myself American Chinese. Uh, I'm more American than I am Chinese. Yeah. And we lived in San Francisco, uh, in the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, up until about 23 years ago. And then had an opportunity to move down here, uh, job change, and I mean, kicking and screaming. Uh, I think I think the recruiter tried three times to get me to come down. Finally came down. And I, first thing I thought it was, oh, this is sort of like Silicon Valley. And look how cheap the homes are. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and ever since then we just we didn't leave. We love it here. We, mm -hmm. we had we had an opportunity a couple of times to go back, and yeah, the quality of living is such so much nicer down here. Mm -hmm. um, what was your family situation like growing up in the Bay? Oh, we were poor. I mean, we're you we're, we're your classic, we're your ch classic immigrant story. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents dragged myself and my two brothers out here, uh, had a suitcase and a couple hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and from there. You know, this is the American dream. Yeah, uh, they worked hard. They saved a little bit. My parents never really, you know, first generation is tough. You know, their hope and dream was that it was just for the kids to establish roots mm -hmm. and then be able to fend for ourselves. And you know, I'm really proud that both myself, my two brothers, and I have a sister that was born here. You know, we're all college grads, mm -hmm. and we've all done well. Um, you know, America's been America's been very very good very, to us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, you know, I think that that's all you want. You want an opportunity to live in a free, safe place, mm -hmm. and and uh, mission accomplished. Thanks, Dad. So she's in science at West Valley Community College in Saratoga. You got your Bachelor of Science in Marketing at Cal State Hayward, and then your MBA in Marketing at San Jose State. Correct. Can you tell us a little bit about your educational journey? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, there weren't that many choices. I. Didn't, wasn't mm -hmm. a scholar. I didn't was a scholarship potential at all. Mm -hmm. uh, part of it was my parents didn't know. I had no guidance on what what scholarships and how to apply for them. Mm -hmm. My parents didn't know anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I really just started on community college because that's all we had, mm -hmm. and it was cheap. And you know, I got luckily when I got there, I found out that because I was poor, mm -hmm. I could apply for some grants. So thank you, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> uh, you know that helped yeah. with books and stuff. And then at, at that some point, I realized, you know, all I wanted was to get a job. Mm -hmm. And I saw, practically speaking, two-year college was great. I learned something, go out, get a job. And, and at that time, I thought like being a, getting an electronics degree, two-year, or maybe be a draftsman. Mm -hmm. at, at that time, you know, long story short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought, wow, you know, two years and I can start making, you know, 20, 24000 a year? Wow, <laughs> amazing, <Yeah. laughs> you know? And then I found out very quickly, so I, I did a short stint at those jobs mm -hmm. and quickly realized when I w looked at the people at that job that they really plateau pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So then I, so the, you know, logically I said, I started asking questions. Yeah. Well, how do you get to the next level? Oh, you need a four year degree mm -hmm. and you, wanna, you need to get into management and you need a four year degree, yeah. maybe an MBA. And that's when I thought, okay, how do I do that? You know, what do you what do you do? Oh, you well, you got to go to four year college. Yes. <laughs> okay, so from there, I you know I went to at that time, uh, what I thought was the only place I could get into, mm -hmm. uh, and so it was I think I went to San Diego State for a while mm -hmm. to get classes. So I ended up at Cal State Hayward, mm -hmm. and then you know the next thing was well, I want to how do I get even further? And everybody said, well, get an MBA. You know, back in the uh, late 80s, mm -hmm. uh, mid to late 80s, that was the way to go. Mm -hmm. MBA, get an MBA. Yeah. It's, it, it was revered more than it was today. 
So then I pulled up my you know boots and I while as while I was working, I went and part time got my MBA mm -hmm. at San Jose State. Okay. And really, that's kind of where it all took off. That opened doors. Yeah. I don't know what it does today, but for me, it was there was no grand plan. Mm -hmm. I just kept asking, what is the next step? Yeah, exactly. What what can I do? And you just keep pushing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of like similar. I was like, you know, obviously I, I always wanted to go to a four year, but you know, I didn't know how I was gonna get there. Right. I had some, you know, struggles along mm -hmm. the way and I got lucky and ended up at UC Berkeley. Yeah, that's and, a great school. Yeah. So I was lucky enough and you know, a lot of people might need to hear that because they might have come from the same background and they don't ask the right questions and they right. might never ever get there. Right. Um, so yeah, I, that's pretty interesting. Well, I mean, if people ask me today, what's the route? I'd say, well, let's take the negative, mm -hmm. uh, non-route. I, I, I find that, I think I find it really tough for somebody to get through for your college and have a 60 or $80,000 student loan. Yeah. I think that's, that's an anchor that doesn't take you anywhere. And I'm just not sure today how important all four years have mm -hmm. to be. You know, do the two the two year to four year route to me has two huge advantages. And you know, we could debate yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. the whole thing about well, you know, you should spend all four years in a dorm and meet people. You know, you could do that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's lots of ways to do that sort of stuff. Yeah. But to me, the two things about school is one, you know, budget wise, mm -hmm. it's way to go. But the other is after two year college, you can get into a place like. Berkeley and not challenge and not not have competition. Mm -hmm. If yeah. I would have known that today, I'm looking right at the camera. If I knew that today, I'd do two years and go to Stanford. You know, that was always yeah. my kind of my hope and dream, and I never made it. Because I didn't know. Yeah. I wish somebody would have just said, do that. Yeah. And they, they do look for transfer, JC transfers. They Absolutely. Do. Well they have to. Yeah. It turns out they have to because it's the logistics of running a four year college. Mm -hmm. They have such a large dropout that they have all these holes. In, in the student, uh, what do you call it, the, the the classes and the schedule. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you learn all this afterwards, folks. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know, I wish somebody yeah. told, told me early on. <laughs> so after college, um, you know, before co-founding uh, Baudu Networks, can you tell us a little bit about your job career heading up to, leading up to that point? Sure. Uh, I got really lucky being in Silicon Valley. I was right there mm -hmm. at the forefront of, in the early days of Silicon Valley. Uh, so there were plenty of jobs mm -hmm. and and just plenty of exposure to to companies as they grow you get to kind of you get you get to try different things mm -hmm. um, there are different jobs I mean it's not real super easy yeah, yeah but with a growing company a lot of times they're, they're willing to have people do something that wasn't quite in their resume yeah uh, and getting exposed to technology was great yeah uh, in my here in my late fifties, I'm very comfortable with technology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I would have been like in some profession that wasn't, I'd be like my fellow old people that you know have a just look at technology and be mystified. Yeah. Uh, so for me, that was a, a huge uh, part of really kind of in career wise mm -hmm. because I applied that later on, and and let me tell you what happened uh, from there. Eventually, what I had was a 27-year career in Fortune 125, mm -hmm. and I worked a lot of big companies. Uh, not all of them were growing quickly, but they were all large. Fortune 125, mm -hmm. and that really built up my resume. And really, part of what helped me succeed in the in part of those jobs was my ability to understand and not be scared of bringing technology into the job. Mm -hmm. When a lot of companies at that point were still kind of relying on IT and you know, really IT uh, in not, not just even just a few years ago, even today in many companies, they're looked at as, oh, well, you know, it's necessary evil. Mm -hmm. And really when you think about it, IT departments are becoming a critical piece of every business mm -hmm. because your business runs. And so, so instead of looking at it as, uh, yeah. It you can really use it to your advantage, yeah. and and I and I've done that throughout my career to because I was not afraid I, and I I was familiar with it. Tell us what Baidu Networks does specifically. Sure, uh, um, we make a simple. Uh, yeah, I guess we, you could say yeah. We make your cell phone and internet traffic uh, faster um, by double or triple the the speed. Mm -hmm. So how does that help everybody else? So so obviously you have. 
the, the triplet speed. Can you talk about the 5G as well? Sure. Uh, so let's a little, a little science explanation. <laughs> uh, all 5G does is at a certain layer, we call it physical layer, it allows faster traffic so that more people can connect and move traffic mm -hmm. faster. Yes. That, what we solved was something actually in the middle. Uh, just because you move traffic fast mm -hmm. doesn't mean traffic's actually moving fast. Yeah, okay. Because in software and in network, there's essentially like a traffic cop. It, you, you have to have one because network traffic works just like the way we talk and just like the way cars move on the road. Mm -hmm. If there's nothing to control it, it there'll be chaos. Okay. Well, we, we figured out how to make that traffic cop smarter. Mm -hmm. And because in today's network, there's a lot of things co contributing to that cop or that police officer getting fake news. Okay, yeah. And so a, a form of fake news in parallel, for you to understand, would be if I was the traffic police officer and I think miles down the road there's an accident. Yeah. I'm going to slow everybody up. Mm -hmm. You ever been on a freeway where the guy zigzags yeah, yeah, to exactly. stop yeah, traffic? Yeah. Well, because something down the road, like a dog, mm -hmm. is going to get run over. Yeah. So they get ahead of it. Well, that's actually what this thing called TCP uh, does. And TCP runs all over. It's it's in your phone. It's in it's in the network. And so we figured out how to make that the news not be fake. Mm -hmm. And it, it has enormous potential and applications. And, and it's built billion dollar potential because. We can put this at a cell tower mm -hmm. and make cell towers work better. And so yeah. just because 5G makes it faster doesn't mean the data is actually yeah, moving as fast. Yeah. And there you go. And then in that's obviously in the, in the process as well, correct? Yeah, we've got some really exciting opportunities. We're in trials with uh, tier one carriers like the AT&Ts of the world. Mm -hmm. And yeah, these are big, giant, really exciting. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, we're talking countrywide deployments. You know, there's there's six million cell towers. Um, well, depending on how you count it, there's 20, 23 million cell towers in the world. Okay. Yeah. And that's a lot of zeros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. So, what was the process like co-founding Body Network? Well, for me, the key to co-founding anything um, was that I was not smart enough to come up with this stuff, and I happened to meet uh, my partner mm -hmm. and realized that not only was he pretty brilliant, but that this opportunity was enormous. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they always say in, in startups uh, or investors, you want to always bet on the jockey, not the horse. Mm -hmm. So first you bet on the jockey and you trust that the jockey can help make the horse better and faster. Yeah. The horse is the product. Yeah, yeah. The jockey are the people mm -hmm. and the technology. Right? So. Uh, when I saw that, I had an opportunity to essentially, long story there, but mm -hmm. um, he's, you know, my partner said, hey, you know, I think we're in the perfect place. Everything's going mobile. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have a really tough time keeping up with people like you and me and, you, and our use of the phone. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, yeah, what does it take? So the conversation started like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what does it take? Well, I need money. Uh, so, you know, you, you, you get into this, let's find money. First step. Let's find money. And how do you find money? You tell people what a great opportunity you have and you somehow show it and you get people to go, oh, yeah, my Wi-Fi sucks. Yeah, you can make it better? Wow. That's got to be like a, a big potential. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it started with a, some friends and family with money and then we, that's, you, you, look, you just get started. You don't know where, how it ends, exactly. but you just keep going and it is a marathon and you keep trying to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. It's the journey of, the, it is the, the journey, process. but I'll tell you, it's just nervous. It's a, you're a nervous wreck because you always want to get there. Yeah. It's like anything else. You just want to get there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming in Absolutely. and kind of giving your story to my viewers. So I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for giving me the channel. Of course. Yep. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks, time. Appreciate it. Yeah, fun. Let me make sure it was recorded, not just... Oh, <laughs>